Now on to our Teachers Day special. Broadcast journalism has transformed over the years and so today on CNBC TV 18 we invited two television broadcast pioneers, Usha Albuquerque and Rini Simon Khanna. They are of course veterans of the television news industry starting their careers on Doordarshan where they were for almost two decades. Here's my special interaction with them on the do's and don'ts of broadcast journalism. We're celebrating Teachers' Day, and in case, in case you missed the beginning of the show, let me introduce our very special guests tonight, two of television broadcast industry's veterans who've pretty much written the book on what television news is all about, Usha Albuquerque and Rini Simon Khanna, who've spent many, many years on Doordarshan broadcasting live every single day. Well, Usha, let me ask you, what was it like? You anchored for DD for about 20 years. This was live news. You started in the black and white era and then moved to the color era. What was it like in those days? Uh, you know, when I see today what's happening and you've got so many cameras and gizmos and all kinds of equipment and I think of the days when we started with black and white, it was just one page that came to you and you pretty much read it and looked up and, and you had you to keep... Did you have to memorize it? Not quite. The pages were there but there were many people who thought we'd memorized it and there were very many people who even asked me, Aapka bharshan bo ta chai. You know, they actually <laughs> thought we were, we were uh, giving speeches. but. Now, when, you know, when I see the equipment that is available, uh, uh, I think it's, it's a huge, uh, you know, step forward and I think it's wonderful. But in those days, it was difficult. Mm. We had just the one camera, we had just the one computer. Mm. So once the news started, they couldn't add or subtract anything. So we got messages or we got paper, sheets what, of paper. What, were handed over to yes, you or were instructions in your instructions year. were being given and, you know, what to uh, stop at and what not to do. And there was very little uh, video footage. Mm. So it was pretty much us, um, you know, giving out the news and mm. the headlines and everything mm. else. So, Rini, let me ask you, I mean, was there any training that, that you got before you actually started? What was that era like of broadcasting live on Doordarshan? Uh, well, when you look back today, you wonder how you did it because, uh, you had, like Usha said, you had very little to work with. Um, these are days when you didn't have the teleprompter and so you relied on um, your own knowledge of what was going on uh, as well as the sheets that came in uh, fresh from the oven. You never even got a chance sometimes to read those uh, sheets beforehand, so you had to improvise and uh, go with the flow. Uh, you also didn't have um, instructions being given to you uh, through a little uh, earphone. Uh, you had instructions being given to you by mime uh, with uh, your um, uh, you know, camera person standing behind the camera and trying to help you as you go along. Or the floor manager. You had somebody called the floor manager who would give you some signals and then you had to interpret uh -huh. and make sure that you didn't show anything on your face but you did it like it was, you know, uh, a duck taking to water. So, yes, very exciting, but um, well, lots of room for, um, for disasters to happen. Uh, and you were pretty much the person who had to <laughs> what, what anchor was the, worst the news disaster? and make sure everything went well. What was the well. worst disaster that you had to live through? Well, um, it was pretty much jumping into the water without knowing whether you can swim or not. Uh, so there were lots of disasters that could occur, but I think uh, most of us managed because we were good at doing what we were doing. Um, a, a lot of us were journalists who had been trained. Uh, we never got training to read the news, but um, you were trained in the medium, so you did understand what was happening and how to skirt a certain issue. Uh, the disasters would be only technical errors mm. that you had to manage at your end without knowing whether they were... Uh, um, you know, manageable or not, because very often, like Usha said, you had very little video, and sometimes the video came on without an audio, and you didn't know whether the audio had gone on or not, and you only had a certain, you know, sheet of paper to work with, <laughs> and uh, you couldn't invent the news, so um, you had to pretty much, you know, go by what was going I, I, on, on the on the floor. Yes. I can imagine yeah. what that was In like. In fact, I, I know there was a time in which I got a blank page 
There was, you got a was blank page. It was absolutely blank because what needed to be said ha had to be changed and the, the editor hadn't been able to scribble it quickly enough. So I finished with one news item and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for the next one so to come. So what did you do? And, and I had to keep looking up and saying, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> and hope something <laughs> would happen. <laughs> also, also, <laughs> that placard didn't come up. Is no, also, Shireen, uh, but, yeah, you know, also, Shireen, you have to understand that those days... Yes, Rini. Uh, sorry, Although, also you have to understand that those days we did have computers. They were being actually typed on a typewriter. So um, you had a sheet that came to you and you had a carbon copy that remained with the editor. So you would p pretty much go with your copy and sometimes there would be um, errors in the typing. There would be typos. Uh, so for instance, yes. you had a line like, police were combing the operation and, and the C got replaced by B. <laughs> so it, it, it would read as, police were bombing the operation. <laughs> And you had to have the presence of mind to correct yourself immediately yeah. and not wait for somebody to tell you, oh, you read it wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm. Absolutely. But, yes. you know, this was not the era of breaking news every minute. I mean, no. today we live in an era of breaking news practically yes, every second, yes. forget every minute. But, you know, were there, were there instances where you had to deal with news on the fly? There was. Um, when something... Yes. You yes. know, really disaster happened. Like, I remember I was on news when uh, Operation Blue Star happened. And that was really, you know, bit by bit. And, you know, we were literally getting lined You know, the visuals were hard to come by. But uh, that was one uh, incident I remember. But by and large, you know, it was news that had happened. And whatever video was mm. available, they would add that on and then, you know, give us the news uh, mm. bulletin along with it. But I don't think it was as sensational as it is so made out think, today. You today, think TV I think news is sensational today? Oh, too much. Too much. Mm? I mean, everything is not necessarily breaking news. Yes. So, but everybody, every news channel wants... Firstly, okay, that's the other thing. We were the only news channel. Yeah. So yeah. there was no competition. Everybody would watch us. So there was no need to necessarily sensationalize mm. things to make it more mm. attractive. Everybody mm. did watch it. Mm. So uh, it was more to make it credible but, but I think rather than sensational. Okay, uh, Rini, what do you... Yeah, I think go ahead. Mean, there was, yeah, there, was, there is that responsibility that comes with being the only news channel. Uh, so, for instance, you know, the breaking news like, say, Mrs. Gandhi's death or Rajiv Gandhi's de assassination, all these things would be, um, you know, dealt with in a very um, uh, somber and dignified manner. And it wouldn't be sensationalized, yet mm. there would be a responsible uh, reportage that would be attached to uh, news of that kind. And very often, uh, you would get called at the last minute because somebody was not available or uh, some disaster mm. happened and uh, you would call... You were called in so you didn't have the time to go through what had gone through the entire day you were just handed the news really hot off the oven